Hello everyone, this is Ronnie from YouTube and this is Aubrey also from YouTube. If you go to Aubrey Musolf or search for that you'll find her channel and feel free to follow whatever she's up to on that channel. But today we're, we're making a video because um, I guess we're talking about cravings on a raw vegan diet. So this channel, however you found this channel, mostly what I talk about is raw food, the raw vegan diet, a fruitarian style diet, which is what I've been doing for a number of years. Aubrey's been doing for quite a while, but you've been specifically raw, 100% raw for like 60 days. Over 60 days now. Since, since just before Woodstock? No, it was literally the day that I got to Woodstock is when I had, I literally had cooked food the day before in Canada. Okay. But prior to that, you'd had times when you'd went raw and did fasting and different things mm -hmm. and juicing. So the reason we want to make this video is because even over 60 days raw but Aubrey is still feeling some strong feelings of like wanting to eat cooked food to tell well you because it seems like you weren't like that a couple of weeks ago and no I was fine and I had no desire I was even like I'm only gonna eat fruit you know what I mean like I get so caught up in that um just whatever I want to do I'm like yeah. this is what I'm gonna do and um but I don't know I feel like it's been maybe a week I don't know how many days I've said, like, I'm thinking about cooked food, you know? Yeah, a few a few days at least. Yeah. And, uh... But what... It's been frustrating. <laughs> it's just annoying because it's, it's not what I truly want, but it keeps coming up. The question I'm asking is, like, what is it specifically you want to eat? And... A lot of it's been, like, could... soup. Yeah, because a lot of those things, like, you could make a raw version, whether it's soup... Or, but you're not really, like, even if I said, well, we can make a raw soup, but you're like, nah. No, it's not the same. <laughs> and then when you were mentioning about wanting to eat cooked food today, and I said, well, why don't we go to the, there's a, a vegan restaurant that has a raw food option, like a gourmet raw option, but you were like, no, it's not, I don't <laughs> want to eat that. No. And we're trying to break down what do you want to eat, and she said, Indian food, Chinese food, and I'm like, or well, Asian food, what like kind, is it the rice, soup, is it the bread, like, what part of it? So it's interesting, but... I think that, to me, like the hardest thing about people going raw is these cravings to go back to eat other other things. That's 100% the reason most people don't do it. And most people don't last a day or a week or a month or ever go 100% because these really strong cravings to go back and eat cooked food come up what, what, for, for whatever reason. And some people say that's a part of detox. And uh, for example, people that do fasting and different things, they've claimed that as the body's breaking down the fat and different things, like the, <clears throat> the food that made that fat maybe is still kind of stored somehow and therefore when it when, when that's all getting processed out that the person then has stronger cravings for those things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's real or not. I guess it could be and it could be a whole part of it. But uh what are you thinking? I mean, what what do you what are you thinking of doing? Are you thinking of going to eat cooked food, or you uh, want to keep going, or? I mean, I still have that want to eat cooked food, like it's still there, um, and I I also don't help myself by, like, getting on Google and <laughs> researching like the vegan restaurants that are around, um, and like looking at their menu and seeing what they have. Uh, because that just perpetuates the craving even more and it, like it's almost like inflicting more suffering because I'm yeah looking at all these things and like thinking to myself well I can't have this and I can't have that and then it turns into that feeling of like doing something or not doing something telling myself I can't which is not what the kind of mindset I should be having yeah. you know like it shouldn't be a matter yeah. of like can't or can um, because it's all just a personal choice and it's been my personal choice to be raw for this long consistently. And so it's like, uh, but it does get tough when it turns into that feeling of like, I'm telling myself I can't. And if I just allowed myself to do it, then it wouldn't be as big of a deal because, but that's the whole thing as well, is that I am allowed to. Yeah, of course. And I'm just the one making the choice not and to. And I'm still allowed to as well. Like people have said to me, um, are you allowed to eat this in your diet? Like, I'm allowed to eat anything on my diet. I can mm -hmm. go and eat beef burgers if I want. I just choose not to. The main reason I choose not to is is not because I think it's disgusting or the flavor. I think the flavor of most of the foods I've eaten in my life is pretty good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have eaten them. Um, 
It's more to do with the fact that I know if I go and eat them, I'm likely going to go and eat them again, and and I'm probably not going to feel good digestive wise. My health's going to go down. So I was raw, close to 100 percent for like five <coughs> years. Um, and there's some foods within there that were questionably raw, but anyway, but then fell off it and ate cooked food again and like super quickly saw the huge difference between raw and, and cooked and it was the first time that I really saw that difference because if you go raw for years you forget what it's like to eat cooked food you, you forget the comparison but like as soon as I was eating that cooked food like it just sat in my stomach like a like a brick it just sat there it was uncomfortable it was really dry in my mouth it was weird um and obviously I had to start to get all these different reactions and it didn't digest as well and, and all this stuff that went along with that. Um, but when you go raw, you are going to continue to have cravings for cooked food for quite a long time and you just have to accept that and be prepared for it and prepare for it by having enough fruit to eat and and maybe maybe you have to look at other things in your life. Why, why are you not what is it that's making you look for that stimulation? Maybe you're not stimulated in, in some other way or whatever. So there's a, there's, this can be a lot to it, but um, it's, I guess it's just proof that to me, like a lot of people stop raw because of cravings and simple things like that. It's not really, like I don't think, there's some people that might say, oh, Aubrey's craving that because there's some nutrient in that that she's missing and maybe she's low, like, not really. Like that's not, to me, that's not Cooked really a food thing. Is not it, it doesn't it doesn't have nutrients. <laughs> like I can't. Yeah, yeah, especially like if it's just a random like. I've never believed in this idea that the body somehow knows that a certain food has a particular nutrient and has a a library stored in the body, and then you can go out and find that thing and it will give you that nutrient. Like that's just. To me, that just doesn't happen. We we get a desire to eat, and we want to eat, and we want to, and to some degree, we want to eat stimulating things more than non-stimulating things, and um, that's that's the way I see it, you know. And I continue with fruit because I love it. I love the whole feeling of this lifestyle. And if I go back to eating cooked food, I will eat mostly cooked food. I I personally can't control that. So. Um, but I'm not telling you not to do that. Like your choice is your choice. Like I don't want to be the reason you go and do it because you want to, because you feel like I'm stopping you from doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just think if you like, well, like you I'm said earlier, you know, you're gonna feel you know how I react when I eat like salad, even because fruit is perfect. And when I go away from fruit, even eating like the fruit salad I was eating the other day with like tomato, mango, cucumber, avocado, and lettuce. Like, because first of all, I eat mostly just very simple. Yeah. I eat usually just like whole mangoes <laughs> and, and I make juice. Um, so when I, even when I food combine just those like five things and throw a little lettuce in there that digests at a different rate than the rest of the food and like the food combining between the avocado and everything else, like. I immediately start to get that like thought process going that's like you're improperly food combining and now it's not digesting as quickly as if you were just eating like a bowl of like three yeah. or four mangoes or whatever or drinking some juice that like flushes things out really nicely. Yeah, and yeah. So if I were to eat cooked food, I would probably have like at least five days of like being really pissed off. <laughs> but yeah, no, I would be worried that you'd be wanting to fast tomorrow. And then you all fast for a couple of days, and then well, that even, may make it. I even then you fasted might want to eat after food more. eating two days of salads with like the yeah. taco seasonings because they irritated my throat yeah, so much, did, and that's not. Well. And we don't use salt, right? So it was just like cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, onion and garnish. cayenne, yeah. and paprika on a salad, and like it made me feel so did something sick. To the thyroid glands. Did something the lymph like, nodes, like, like the ones. lymph got yeah. backed up and stuff to the point where like in the days of not knowing how the body works thinking you you know you're like oh my throat hurts my throat's swelling up like yeah all of those things that <laughs> we didn't know how to identify back in our childhood and everything um 
So I was like, I'm just going to fast. And I fasted. I dry fasted for like 27 hours. And after that, I was just like completely fine and back into fruit. But it gets, those cravings come up and I tend to go toward the salad again. But I think it's a better idea for me personally just to like go for more fruit. Mm. And so like today was good because we went to a fruit market, an Asian market, and got a bunch of fruit. So now I'm like fine again. Because I we have so many bananas, but I don't. But, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to come up. These cravings are going to come up for a long, long time. They could come up even... I Personally, I felt like at least six months was quite a long period of... When I first went raw, like, quite a lot of cravings within the first six months. And then it started to go down a little bit. But if you just... The way I think about it is I don't really think about cooked food that much anymore. And it doesn't trigger me. But mm. if I was to sit down and think about it, and really think about it and imagine the flavors and if i really got into that mindset i would start craving it as well it's just that i don't it's it, it just i just don't think about it yeah. just naturally don't think about it anymore when i go into the supermarket i never go to those aisles like i just it's not forcing myself i just don't do it and the the, the way i feel like <clears> a lot of these cravings work is you have a thought that leads to another thought that leads to a, a memory that leads to emotions that leads to like you're, you're like you've got this feeling in your body like I need to go and do that and um and then you go and do it and like that's what that kind of triggering thing is and you just lose the triggering after a while if you complete if you choose to continue to ignore it and um and that's how it works eventually that you don't have the craving for it anymore but if you get hungry you're always going to want to eat Cooked food always is going to look or smell good to you. Um, and especially I because everyone else is doing it. Yeah, and you need to accept that as well. Like, it's not disgusting. It's not like, oh, look at the disgusting cooked food. Like, I've seen people do stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not real. Like, that there stuff's was a time delicious. When you loved like, it, don't, so stop. yeah, <laughs> like, that stuff's delicious. Don't, don't pretend that it's not. Like, but you're not eating it for it because you're making a particular choice in the moment, for the moment, and a commitment to better health hopefully, and all the stuff that goes along with that. So we're coming up to the end of the video. Anything you want to say? Okay, let's just promote you a little bit. So if you want to go and see Aubrey's stuff, Aubrey Musolf on YouTube, we'll yep. put a link down below, um, I think. Or maybe maybe there won't be a link, but just search for Aubrey Musolf, uh, A-U-B-R-E-Y-M-U-S-O-L-F. Find her channel, have a look at the things that she's doing and see if it's interesting to you. And uh, you're in Glasgow right now. Yep. We might do, we might do some kind of workshop or something. If anyone's in Glasgow, um, we might be at the Mind Body Soul Fair next weekend. Yeah, if you'd we like to be. come along, and we'd mm -hmm. like to get some people together. If you're out there, put a comment below. If you want to like meet up and eat some raw food together, hang out and stuff. So let us know. We're here for a little while. We're probably going to try and go away to the Canary Islands or somewhere nice for a while at least. If anyone is out there who's in those places and you'd like to host us or you know a place we can go, feel free to reach out as well. So thank you okay. very much for watching. Um, feel uh, you know, share the video, whatever, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.